grounded. No travel to the Caribbean, no travel to Mexico as of today as Canada institutes new travel restrictions. Those restrictions will last until the end of April. Travelers who actually now come back to Canada from other destinations will have to land at only four airports. Vancouver, Calgary, Toronto, and Montreal. Once on the ground, they will be forced to quarantine in a government-mandated hotel for three days at their own expense, could be up to $2,000. There they will be tested. If you, they test positive for COVID, they go to another government location for quarantine. And if negative, they go home and follow the protocols there. Is all this too little too late? Why no stoppage of travel to other popular destinations like Florida or Arizona? Let's find out. Joining us now is the Transport Minister, Omar Al-Gabra. Uh, first of all, congrats on your new appointment, Minister. Um, your government knew the second wave was coming months and months ago, and yet you didn't impose these new restrictions on travel before the Christmas holiday break, the New Year break. Another key time. That led to a spike in cases. Now you're doing it now. Uh, did you? Why not earlier? Why now? Uh, first of all, Evan, it's good to be uh, back on your show. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, look, since the beginning of the pandemic, we've been guided by public health advice, by consulting experts, by assessing circumstances that we're in. And from the beginning, we've actually advised Canadians to cancel all their non-essential travels since March of last year. We've also imposed a 14-day quarantine since March of last year. Uh, we've uh, also uh, banned non-citizens uh, and non-permanent residents to come to Canada. And obviously, throughout the pandemic, throughout the developments of the first wave, second wave, we've reassessed, we've changed, we've modified a lot of these rules. And at the beginning of the year, of this year, we've imposed an additional measure, which is pre-departure testing. So any arrival to Canada has to get a negative COVID test before they're able to board a plane. Uh, I get it. Why the incrementalism, Minister? I, I, you keep doing it, but the cases, you know, the incrementalism has not stopped the case counts. It has not stopped the arrival of the first variant. I know you, your government keeps saying you're listening to medical advice, but Australia imposed the hotel quarantine in March of last year. So did South Korea. New Zealand did it in April. Those countries have had significantly better COVID outcomes than Canada. So is by putting it on finally now at the end of January, uh, is that an admission that Canada should have done this earlier? No, no, Evan, it's uh, the opposite. Canada has already some of the strict, strictest rules for, uh, for travelers. Uh, Australia and New Zealand have different circumstances, different geographical consideration. What we're doing here is we're adding additional measures because we're heading towards a vacation season. We want to remind Canadians uh, that we are advising them strongly against any non-essential travel, against right. vacations. So we're adding extra measures. I understand that, but we just came through a travel season at the, the New Year's and the Christmas break. We didn't have that. Now we've got the arrival of new strains. They must have come from overseas. So the question is, why now? And if you're going to do stop destinations like Mexico and the Caribbean, why not Florida, Hawaii, Arizona? Also, what happened to those? Okay, so Evan, look, we, first of all, Christmas, we did not have the issue of variants at the time. These are uh, new developments that just arise. And we were hopeful, look, Ideally, we would have a neat answer that applies to everything, but it was impossible. We looked at banning all flights, and that would have a massive impact on our logistical system, on our essential travel. Mm -hmm. We looked at uh, uh, doing other measures, and what we ended up doing is customizing uh, options here and there to make sure that we addresses most of the issues. And, and the Caribbean and Mexico is where most uh, Canadian travelers go on vacation. But we're asking our Canadians to cancel all vacations, not just the Caribbeans, but, not just to Mexico. And we're in middle of discussions with the U.S. on even strengthening measures uh, between us and the U.S. So for border crossers, whether they're land crossers or uh, 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 airline crossers. And we've also streamlined the airports. You mentioned it in your introductory. Now we're only allowing international flights to land at the four major uh, airports so we can deal with the arrivals through testing and quarantine. Right. Let me get to the cost. $2,000 for three days in these hotels. Can you give us any details? Where are these hotels that, that people will have to stay? Who's paying the workers to work there in, under potentially 
uh, dangerous circumstances. And are other people, are other people allowed to stay in these hotels? Can you give us some detail? So public health is the lead on the implementation of this measure. This was based on their advice. Uh, the reason why the number uh, est uh, uh, estimated has been mentioned is because it includes additional costs other than just staying in a hotel. It includes uh, health measures, it includes security measures. So those are, uh, those are uh, uh, ballpark figures. Uh, and as we uh, get closer into the implementation in the coming weeks, we will have a much more accurate assessment uh, uh, of the dollar figure and exact locations. Just finally, is your government compensating the major airlines for taking these measures? Is there going to be an airline package for them? So let, let me just uh, uh, acknowledge that the airline has been the hardest hit sector of our industry. Airline uh, sector is, and the aviation sector is extremely important for our economy, for our security. And uh, I want to also acknowledge the, the sacrifice of the aviation employees uh, how helpful and how committed and dedicated they have been and how negatively impacted they have been by COVID. Last November, we had agreed to enter into negotiations with the major airlines in Canada to discuss uh, some kind of a, a financial assistance package. Now, I acknowledge that these new measures are going to add an extra burden, so that will be part of the consideration, uh, and there's a greater sense of urgency to come up with some type of support. Minister, it's a pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Evan. Coming